then I'm gonna throw a two, one, and I'm gonna come over the top. Okay. Ah, <sighs> back again. Fucking puking last night. Puking my goddamn fucking guts out all night. It's all right. Today's a new day. Oh, let's stretch those backs out. Grab ourselves a drink. Have a slurp. We got everyone's favorite Christian today with us, Sonoman, JX Soto, and Mariah Morgan here to discuss. Okay, thank you very much. Gloria Tells, Funky Jam. Episode 78. Perfect. Um... I have a weekly newsletter that comes out every Thursday. It comes out, and that is in the bio. So you click it, type your email in, and you get a weekly newsletter of the gems that stuck out to me each week. Um, we got product. JX's uh, clothing brand dropped a new. What do you got? What do you got going on, Dre? Uh, I got some new T-shirts and a hat, and I'll be putting geese on there soon yes and they're stylish they're very nice this this last drop and then patreon.com slash red academy this week i was doing some giveaways um some giveaway contests and we got a lot of shit going up there if you're a supporter if not please click the subscribe button it helps out um yeah i fucking i don't even know i don't even know if it was like a stomach flu i don't know if it was food poisoning but holy shit it was a long night of just fucking puking. I haven't puked like that for a long time, um, but feeling better. So it was like, a, I don't know if it was a 24 hour flu. I don't know what the fuck it was. We're supposed to be in LA recording a monster pod with Brittany Palmer and Dingo from monster. So we'll have to reschedule that because I didn't want to go there and spread the sickness. Okay. You caught that from Sean, didn't you? Is that what it was? He had a 24 hour bug too. Are you, you're feeling better though? You said, yeah. Today? Yeah, you definitely caught that from him. It's just a matter of time before that shit gets passed. It's fucking nasty O'Malley's, I swear to God. <laughs> uh, we've been watching a show called Love Prison. I think it's an older show. It's on Discovery Plus. And it's it's couples who were have only been talking online for six months to a year. There's different ones. And then they they put them in this house that's on this island, and they're not allowed to go outside but an hour a day. And they have no phones, no TV, no radio, no technology, and they're stuck in this house for seven days with this person. Time it is. And they don't know what even time it is. And it's their first time meeting. And we we watched all five, five or six episodes, and it seems to me that on most of the episodes, the girl is usually the crazy. Would you agree? No, some of them were normal. Yeah, and some of them were stingy when it comes to fucking, and... Well, how do you expect them to just do that when they've never met you? Yeah, but you've been talking for a while, you've been talking for a while, and if you've been talking for six months to a year, there's probably been some dirty talking going on. But it's different. Yeah, in person. it is. But those guys aren't ver weren't very good at, at, at explaining to the girls, but like, we're here for seven days, we have nothing to do. One of the funnest things we could do is make each other feel good with a sexual interaction. Yeah, but then if the girl just gives it up to them, then they're not going to be interested anymore and they're worried about them never talking to him or having a relationship after. Yeah, which is, which is true, I think. I mean, when you meet a girl and you fuck first night, then it kind of takes away from the... Sometimes, I would say. Like wanting to date them. If I would have fucked you first night, I think I would have still wanted to date you. I don't think so. Really? I think if you like, if a girl gives it up on the first night, in my head, I'm always like, she's she giving up does. a lot. Yeah. That's what, at least I think she could not be, but that's what yeah. I think. Yeah. So then that takes away from like the girlfriend type. Oh, yeah. Then type it's thoughts. just like, I'm going to hit you up late at night. 
It's fun. It's it's fun in those uh, watching those shows and just where their communication goes south when they get into these little tiffs and stuff, and one person gets fired up and the other person gets fired up. Just seeing where like this is where you went wrong, and a lot of it comes down to like we were talking about just ownership, just owning up to it, saying no, I fucked up. I was moody. I said this. I acted this way, and I'm sorry. I should. I I fucked up and did that. Compared to just defending themselves and. Yeah, because they almost act like children because like when you see like a kid react to something negatively or they don't know how to express themselves so they react in a certain way and people don't ever learn how to communicate. So you still act the same way as you did when you were a kid because you got whatever you needed out of that the way you acted. So you act like a brat or you act rude because you're hurt too and it's just weird watching it. But as soon as they take ownership and apologize then they work through it. Yeah. And it's fucking awkward. That show, you can just feel the awkwardness it, through the TV. Um, yeah, you can. And then they're like getting along and then the TV will come on and they'll show like clips and they'll say like, oh yeah, I've been hooking up with different girls all the whole time we've been talking. She doesn't know about that. And like, then they have to work through that. It's bad. That's messed up. <laughs> well, and it's like, okay, if we're if I'm talking to someone online and we didn't establish there's a, there's a we're together we're together and he and someone else is fucking clapping other cheeks i mean how can you be mad well i think that's where people just assume the other person's doing what they're doing mm -hmm. like if i was talking to someone i would assume that they're like interested in me or whatever but they might still be going to get other girls still interested in me but we don't ever see each other but that they don't ever talk about that mm -hmm. so then when it's brought up it's super awkward yeah it is awkward uh i've been fucking around a little bit on the chat open open ai thing and that thing's insane chat gpt chat that is, gpt i had to do an assignment on that and that thing is scary did you really yes uh, like a study on it that thing is like what that, was that, what'd you learn basically it's gonna be the new wave of teaching like for our our my kids as kids probably chat gpt's it's gonna be the teacher yeah that's really? gonna take a lot of jobs over for sure. Wow. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, the more I'm learning about it, I'm like, fuck. And well, they said this was only, what, the third generation of it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This thing is fucking crazy, dude. Within seconds, it will write you a story. I got I, I, I go on here. Let's see here. Form me a story about Blake Cannonier, a kid who covers his homosexuality with oh. Christianity. <laughs> and let's see if she'll, she'll type anything oh up here. Oh, my God. Blake Cannonier was a bright and talented young boy. He was a straight-A student and an accomplished athlete. But there was something that Blake was struggling with. Oh, my. Something. Hey, quiet down. Something he couldn't share with anyone. He was gay. Blake grew up in a conservative Christian family where homosexually... No, Quit laughing no. and let me read the fucking no. story. No. Blake grew up in a conservative <laughs> Christian family where homosexuality was viewed as a sin. He had always <laughs> known he was different, but he didn't know how to reconcile his sexuality with his faith. Fuck you, Chad GBT. No, listen, stop it. So he did what he thought was the right thing. He buried his true self and immersed himself in Christianity. Oh my. Blake became a devoted member of his church. He attended services regularly, volunteered for various events, and even led a Bible study group for teens. That's he good. convinced himself that by following the teachings of the Bible, he could suppress his feelings and lead a normal life. But deep down, Blake knew that he couldn't keep up this facade forever. He yearned to be accepted for who he truly was, but he was terrified of the consequences. What would his family and friends think? I can tell you one thing, Blake, we will love you. Oh and you'd be God, our boy just as much as anything else. Shit. I can tell you that much right now. Would he be rejected by his church? Would he be shunned by his community? Despite his fears, Blake eventually found the courage to come out to his closet <laughs> friends, closest friends, <laughs> closest friends. I would hope you'd come out to me, brother, because I would love you just as much as I do. <laughs> to his surprise, they accepted him with open arms and supported him through his journey. But telling his family was a different story. They were deeply religious and had always been vocal about their views on homosexuality. Oh, my God. Blake feared their rejection and decided to wait. <laughs> it wasn't until Blake started college that he finally found the strength to tell his family. Oh, no. He knew that he couldn't continue living a lie and he wanted to be as true himself. The conversation with his parents was difficult, but he was relieved to hear that they still loved him. 
even if they didn't fully understand his sexuality. Now Blake is living his life as an openly gay Christian. Oh my God. He still attends church and remains active in his faith community, but he no longer feels the need to hide his true identity. He has found acceptance and support from those who matter most to him, and he knows that he is loved just the way he is. Just a flamboyant Christian in that story <laughs> world, I guess. Yes. Wait till I write that, a story about that, you. That that thing wrote that within seconds, yeah. Jay. Within fucking seconds, dude. It's pretty crazy, but it's a generic story, though. Yeah. What does yeah, generic mean? It's like not really creative. It's kind of like. But it was. I don't think it's creative. <laughs> I think it's kind of like generic. Yeah, it's generic, you know? You think? It yeah. Would, it wouldn't win awards. No, but it's impressive that it writes yeah, it that yeah, fast. Like. True. But it's nothing special. I mean, you can ask this thing anything. How about this? Who is God? Hmm? God is a concept that is understood and interpreted differently by people of different religions, cultures, and belief systems. In general, God is often considered to be supernatural being or force that is responsible for the creation and maintenance of the universe and all life within. Blah, 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 blah. I asked that I mean, thing if Jesus was real. keeps going. And what did it say? It gave me an answer. Is like, that's up to your own belief. Like, there's no proof saying it is or isn't. And I was like, mm. Chad GPT give me a political answer already. What do you think it's going to do when it's leveled up? But it is still like political because when they were doing it on Joe Rogan, they were bringing up like Fauci and then they brought up like Gordon Ryan and they made it like very political. Uh, what is a good diet? A good diet is one that provides necessary nutrients, vitamins and minerals that the body needs to function properly and maintain good health. This typically involves eating a variety of nutrient dense foods in appropriate portions while minimizing the consumption of processed foods, added sugars and unhealthy fats. Some key components of the healthy diet include fruit and vegetables. These are rich source of vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Eating a variety of fruits and vegetables of different colors can help ensure a broad range of nutrients. Whole grains. These are rich sources of fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Whole grain option include brown rice, whole wheat bread, and quinoa. Lean proteins, chicken, fish, beans, and tofu can provide amino acids for building and repairing tissues. Healthy fats, nuts, avocados, oils limited sugars adequate hydration yeah this chap gpi shit is gonna fucking change a lot the it's, fact that it can just write a story like oh that God. yeah totally fake one but yeah yeah totally. i mean pretty probably pretty accurate <laughs> anything you, you so you guys been fucking around with that at school yeah they want they want us to do more and more like projects on it and i'm like bro this shit is for the birds like it's gonna take away customer service jobs and we're gonna start talking to that like that gpt thing more than we are people which you know how frustrated, nice. how frustrated can you get with a computer though? And you would just like, I want a person to explain my situation. No, you don't want a fucking Indian lady <laughs> who just you can barely understand her and she just hangs up on you. Chat yeah. GPI, if that thing's dialed in and it, <laughs> True, but know, I'm a person dude. guy. Are you? Like yeah, a robot can lead you a wrong way. Well, even now they have like the chat option and mm -hmm. it only gives you like certain options you can pick. And then they're like, can I connect you with the person to help? Like, yeah. and you usually need the person. Yeah. Uh, pretty crazy shit. You guys should check it out. Try it out. I thought this was good. This is good. This is Andrew Huberman on how to get rid of hiccups because we all deal with it. Everybody experiences hiccups from time to time. I think most people would agree that one hiccup, sort of funny, two hiccups in a row is really funny. And three hiccups in a row is where it starts to be concerning, in part because hiccups can be kind of painful. There is a technique that can reliably eliminate hiccups, and it's a technique that takes advantage of hyper-contracting the phrenic nerve over a short period of time so that it then subsequently relaxes or alleviates the spasming of the phrenic nerve. And that simple method is to inhale three times in a row. This is a very unusual pattern of breathing, but what it involves is taking a big deep inhale through your nose. Then before you exhale any air, take a second inhale through the nose, however brief that inhale might be. And then a third, even micro or millisecond long inhale through your nose to get that third inhale and then hold your breath for about 15 to 20 seconds and then slowly exhale. Everybody experiences uh, thank hiccups you for from that, time to time. Dr. Huberman, because fucking hiccups get annoying. And there's all those old tales, the old Native American tale to where you light a match and put it in a cup and then drink it. 
you don't swallow the match, but you just swallow the fucking water. Where did you learn that one from? I don't even remember. <laughs> and then uh, the other one where you get scared. Bah, uh, and they scare you and you lose it. Or mine, I thought, worked, and it's similar to Huberman's, is just hold your breath till you think you're going to die. And let it out hard. I had one when we were little. They told us you plug your ears and take like three gulps of water. Uh huh. And sometimes you have to do it twice, but it does work. Yeah. Uh, Aljamain Sterling tweeted, lack of sleep is my biggest weakness. Constantly waking up through the night makes no sense. I don't even understand how I train with the little sleep I get for recovery. I saw that too, bro. And I saw that Cejudo said that Aljamain hadn't signed his, like he's commenting everywhere when they're posting about that fight, like Aljo still hasn't signed. Aljo still hasn't signed. Yeah. That's weird. He's tweeting that weird shit out and then he's not signing the contract. It's yeah, like, I mean, the fight's slowly creeping up. And he, he's got a torn bicep. He's not sleeping. I don't know. I think it's going to be important that we stay ready for Henry. Yeah. Watching Henry's little vlogs coming out with Demetrius Mighty Mouse, the way he's standing there, the way. I mean, that style of people, Sean's knocked him out. I mean, Henry's another level. He's Olympic champion, UFC champion. He's a beast. But I'm just telling you, that orthodox style with him, him, him floating his chin like that, Sean's going to be able to find it. I fucking hope that fight happens, but that sucks. Lack of sleep, fuck. Too much caffeine. It could be. Or just so sore, he probably needs like maybe more magnesium or sometimes minerals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're, even when you're deficient in minerals, that can really mess up your sleep. Uh, JX sent me this. New study reveals that drinking Coke and Pepsi leads to larger testicles and more testosterone. A study has revealed how <laughs> drinking Coca-Cola and Pepsi can lead to larger testicles and higher testosterone. The Northwest Northwest Minzu University in China was attempting to determine the impact of carbonated beverages on fertility and sex organs in men. That's interesting. Uh, I don't think it would be from Coke or Pepsi uh, if it's just carbonated beverages. Don't drink Coke or Pepsi, even if you want larger nut sack. <laughs> Um, the women who accused Conor McGregor of assaulting her on a yacht in Spain last July has dropped all charges against the Irishman. I wonder if someone like one of, one of Conor's like lawyers or whoever hit her up and said, Hey, let's fucking drop this. If we keep going with it, we're going to be in court for years. Or how about I scratch you off a million dollars right now and we walk separate ways. She Never probably, bring it up again. She was like, yep. Yep. A hundred percent. Well, that's what a lot of people do. And they sign that like thing where they can't ever talk about it again and then they get paid the nda thing yeah. yeah yes 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 well connor's shoulder too ever since he got in that car wreck have you guys seen all the cupping that's been getting done like all the pictures he releases like he's flexing there's just hella cupping spots all around his right shoulder and he's like was oh. it his right or his left shoulder I it might it be was, his left i think it was his left but his, that that whatever side got hit is getting extremely cupped i don't know if that's a bad sign or well, I'm I mean, sure it's messed up yeah. somehow, like getting hit when you're on your bike. Yeah, and, and putting on muscle as quick as he put on muscle, I mean, that probably has going to affect the joints a bit. Mm -hmm. And fuck, uh, fucked up shoulders are a bitch. Oh, and you're right. That's his left. That's his power. That's his sniper shot. <laughs> Is um, he coming back? He, the uh, he's a tough fighter against Chandler, but they're just like, they're just recording the fighter house right now. He's not fighting for a while, I don't think. Yeah, he's the ultimate fighter coach. Uh, Dustin Poirier slaps a man who tried to insult him with a sign. It looked like they were at a, a little... Um, Mardi Gras parade. Mardi Gras parade. And, and this fat guy with a beard holds up this sign. I mean... What, what did the sign say? It said, your wife's in my DMs. It's like, dude... People getting lippy like that. They're, they're, I don't know if they're too confident. What, what was that guy trying to do? What was his focus on that? When he's like, I'm going to write this sign. I'm going to show it to Dustin. They a guy who could fucking beat yeah. my ass. He just wants to get his ass whipped and be viral for it, probably. Is that what it is? It's like, you fucking douche, dude. Yeah, he deserves to get slapped for sure. Yeah. But they just want attention, I think. Yeah. If that happened to you, Tim, how would you react? You're just in the back of your truck having a good time. I mean, probably. Like, I see my DMs. In, I mean, if it was something like that, in my mind, automatically, I'm like, I'm gonna, I want to slap the <laughs> shit out of that guy. But then it's like, what's the point? What's the fucking gonna do? I mean, then they have it on video, you smacking the guy, and it's this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And was that's exactly just, what the guy wanted. 
Was he just holding the sign or was he like taunting him or what happened? Yeah, yeah. holding the sign. Then he was walked up to him. Dustin tried to give him a smack in. He deserved that. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? I know we got a bunch of Patreon questions here. Patreon questions and some call-ins. Ah, we could hit the call-ins first. Oh, I love these. Uh, call-ins. Let's see if we get any good ones today. Did you listen to them yet? No. <laughs> so I will. Years now, but uh, one of the, I have a secret I've never told anybody is one time when I was 16 and I was coming home from a party. Uh, I came home at like seven in the morning. I lived with my dad and my stepmom at the time, and uh, you know, so they didn't know. They thought I was gone. They didn't know I was home. I got home. Like I said I came in and passed out about seven, and then uh, at 9:30, and like two and a half hours later, I wake up and I just hear what sounds like like clapping, and I'm like, man, what is that? And uh, this is a two-story house. So uh, I, I get up to see what that noise is, and I get on the stairs, and when I look to the side of the stairs, I see my dad, I mean, just straight piping my stepmom, <laughs> all right? And I, so something I have to add is my stepmom is pretty bad. And uh, so I never told anybody this because when I seen them doing that next to the stairs, I, I took a little look at my stepmom, you know what I'm saying? Because she, she got a fat ass and uh She's pretty bad, so I'd, I'd take a little gander. But then I went to walk back up the stairs, and I tripped and fell into the door. And then I hear go, oh, shit, somebody's here. And then all of a sudden, my dad started running around naked. And then he sees me and asks me when I got here. And uh, I told him that I got here at, like, 4 in the morning from a party. And uh, it was real awkward after that, but I've never told anybody that, so that's a secret. But uh, shout out to you. Shout out to Red Hot Recap. And uh, that's my secret. Uh, that's a decent little secret there. I think that's yeah. happened to people multiple times. I walked in on my dad fucking my stepmom, too. I don't think he ever knew it or anything. I just kind of snuck out of there. Um, yeah. I mean, How did you do that? Just yeah. open the door? Well, I just walked by to the bathroom, and I saw my dad on top of my stepmom just oh, flexing God. his butt cheeks in there. Oh, God. And I just walked away. I'm like, I didn't think it was that big of a fucking deal. It would suck, though, if you're, I mean, if you, you had, or had an attraction to your stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> you ever dealed with any of that, Jay or Jay or Sono? No. I, that would suck. Would you scream? I'd be like, dude, come on. Dad, come on. Don't <laughs> fuck her. What the hell? <laughs> okay. What the fuck is up, man? Hey, so my embarrassing story, I've never told anyone. That's a lie. I might have told one person. I don't remember. Anyways, I just got out of the Army. But when I first got into the Army, it was my first day at my new duty station. I had to take a shit so bad, I just drank a huge-ass coffee. And my new Sergeant Major, pretty high rank, comes to greet me. I fucked up, called him the wrong rank, like a dumbass. And he just started ripping my ass. Like I said, I had to shit so bad, I slightly shit my pants, bro. I had to take the whole ass rip in with the fucking turd nugget in my underwear and then go take the rest of my shit after I was done getting yelled at. Mm -hmm. Embarrassing as fuck, even though anyone knew about it. You know, I was like, damn, what if I smell now? You know, I had to go in the stall, take my fucking underwear off and throw them away. But that's life, baby. Yeah, that's not too bad there. Um, it's not bad. So, no, you ever uh, called you when you were in the army, called someone by their wrong? Yeah, I mean, when I was in, I just, like, I've messed up before, but they never snapped on me like that. I, I've i heard of stories of people getting snapped on. I'm like, bro, who cares if you mess up a name? That's one of the things I can't get over is people that power trip in the military. It's like, bro. Well, I think, I wonder, I wonder why do they pow power trip in the military? Because are they trying to, are they trying to establish like, hey, you fucking listen to me. Don't think for yourself. You just listen and follow my orders. That's I'll, it. Dude, a lot of my personal experience is people that never got respected their whole life, like before military, friends mm -hmm. groups, then they get, they stay in the military long enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a time thing. They get that power and they're like, ha, ah, I got to get my get back. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the worst things I think is having an insecure person, whether yeah. it's insecure about their skills, whether it's insecure about something and put them in a powerful position. Yeah. Um. And you really can, you can know, you can kind of tell, you mm -hmm. can tell when someone's in a powerful position and they're just, and they're just like disrespecting people that are maybe 
lower level than them or they're just being dickheads or almost yeah. being it's like what the fuck are you so insecure about yeah all the baddest motherfuckers i know are very nice to people that are i mean maybe not as tough as them whatever whatever it is maybe not as smart as them all the best leaders i've ever met there's like super respect everyone mm -hmm. and then you get that person who's not i i don't know yeah yeah we'll, we'll end it there okay here we go Timbo, so I got a pretty good story here. My buddy, he's kind of my homie. Uh, we work together. We're both bouncers at a bar. And he has been fucking this chick. She's hot. And I always see her give me the fuck eyes. So he was fucking her for, I don't know, a few months. And one night on my way home, I get a little text from her. She wants me to pull up. So I do it. I pull up. I smash the shit out of her. I nut her right in her face. Raw dog her. And just that next week, my buddy was bragging to me about how, just bragging to me about fucking her and about how much she loves fucking him. And she told me, as soon as I nut her on her, she said, you have no idea how long I've been waiting for that. So I haven't had the heart to tell my buddy, but it's good juice for the pod. Yeah, I mean, Damn. that's decent juice. That's decent juice. Um... If he's your real buddy, you could tell him, hey, dude, sh come on. She, she's just a horny girl who likes to fuck. It's yeah. nothing special. I, I gave her a spin. I took her for a spin, and she we fucked. Some people don't like sharing, though, even if it's not theirs. Yeah, they don't, do they? Mm -mm. Okay, let's try this one. That was decent. Timbo, this is Evan. Uh, I just wanted to get something off my chest to the boys. Here's the best place to do it. I've been following you guys for a while, but let's get to the jump. <sighs> I don't know how to say this, and I hope my parents aren't listening, but uh, I'm actually adopted, and I haven't told them yet, so I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I'm thinking about doing it on my dad's birthday, so just let me know if you guys have any advice. Please just let back. I can use all the help. Schmitty, you're the best. Bye. Um you've been adopted i mean and your parents don't know that you know that you're adopted you should just be thankful that you got adopted yeah super fucking thankful that you didn't have to live in what kind of houses are, are they foster foster houses mm -hmm. where dude i've heard some fucked up stories at foster places because I, I think when you foster a child you get a monthly check right mm -hmm. so probably probably a lot of dirt bags and probably a lot of nice people too obviously trying to help people just foster kids just to get that extra check and they'll stack up kids because the yeah. more kids it's like and then just treat them like shit that's the kids that grow up to be sometimes not the best because they have no real mentorship yeah talking to that mic in the house my yeah it's all right yeah you hear kids like grow up in the foster system and it's just horrible like their experience and i don't think you should tell on your dad's birthday like if you want to tell them <laughs> if they love you and you had a great like childhood not everyone's childhood is peachy perfect but yeah you need to be grateful and thank them yeah not be mad at them yeah like why the fuck would you be mad at them uh, even if they didn't tell you like they see you as their real son you yeah. know Hello, Mr. Jimbo. it is 10 o'clock in california time whatever the fuck that means what was the question again hold up let me look a secret you have never told anyone or a funny trauma that happened well buddy so first fight i watched of sean when he was fucking laying on the ground and he said, I love you, Joe Rogan. Ever since then, I've been watching you guys' pod, buddy. And buddy? Uh, recently, <gasps> I heard you guys say to never have kids. I least he did. And he's rich because it fucks your life. And I quote. And I happen to be 20 years old and impregnate my girlfriend. And, um, yeah, I didn't want to do it, buddy. Um, 20. My kill count's like, what, eight? 
They came and buy me a munchy meal at Jack in the Box. I wasn't, I wasn't putting up with this dude. I ain't gonna, I was gonna start scamming like some Detroit motherfuckers with some money, dude. But, no, I don't want to. I don't want to work. I want to be a bum for at least like five more years, dude. Call it, call it how you want it. And I told her I'm not doing it, dude. And we didn't do it. I... Not the good old, um, what you can do in Texas, brother. I don't know if I could say that word on here, but I'm not going to. Did the good old Texas route, or non-Texas route, I should say. And, um, she ended up going to a concert about that kind of stuff, and, um... Okay, so... That guy's it, got his priorities straight. Well, it Jesus. just it just sucks as a I, I for the young bucks listening out there, I just don't think that everyone knows. Like when you put your wiener inside a girl's vagina and then come in there, that's the recipe for having a kid. And I think some people need to re- be reminded of that because some kids do that and they just do that. And I don't, I don't know, do they not know? Like that's how babies are made right there. So if you're in you're busting in a girl. Every time you bust a nut in a girl, you should say, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bust a nut, and now I'm gonna be a father." I can't speak on this. I mess up, and I'm always like, "No," because in the moment you're like, "I don't need a condom. This is awesome. Let's go." Yeah, but you don't think it all like, and even if you do do an abortion, it's like it sucks for that girl because it probably fucks the girl up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I it, would think so. It's got to kill something in your body. Like, who yeah. knows what and- that does to a person. I mean, you have to make that decision for yourself. I don't know. I've never been in that position. So you have to make that best decision for yourself. But also, I don't think you should take what you guys say on your podcast seriously about never have kids. Like, think about it. And if you just want to be a piece of shit bum for five more years, then I guess that's your choice. But don't just guilt that on her. Like, you Mm -hmm. made that decision to come on her. And if you guys are going to have a baby, then you need to step up. And I don't remember ever saying don't have kids. I mean, you say I, put it off because if you're going to do something, then it's going to make it harder. It's not like don't have kids. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of people who have kids when they're young and it's the best thing that's ever happened to them because they have no direction in life. So now they have a direction and to make, mm-hmm. to build a good human. I've only heard you guys preach don't have kids until you're ready. That's yes. what I've heard. Not the don't yeah. have kids. Not being to, in, in your l- early twenties, you're fucking not even an adult really. And you're busting a nut in a girl, and now you ha- you now you're in charge of raising another human. That's what we're sa- we're saying. Yeah. And when you, like I said, it's it's crazy because I I don't think men, a lot know about it. But when you come in a <laughs> vagina, that's what makes the kids. So every time you come in a vagina, Blake, hey. plan on being a dad. And the abortion doesn't. Pray not to be. Pray not to be though. Yep. Yep. Pr- <laughs> pray not to be. <laughs> But people do need to be reminded of that because it's not just like, and it's like a guy can be like, yeah, well, I don't want to have a kid. Like, F you. Like, I'm not going to have a kid. I'm not going to be responsible for that. But it's not that easy for a girl. Yeah, yeah. they could fuck a girl And up. she needs to be responsible too and be like, no, you're not going to have sex with me unless you wear a condom. Unless you're like Sona who sneaks the rubber off mid-fuck. No, no. It's never on. They know? the. They know? Yeah, it was never put on because I, usually I'm tipsy. Mm. And I'm like, ah. And then I wake up and I'm like, I did not do that, did I? Like One, one prayer and it's, you're good. <laughs> well, I've been good so far. Let's knock on wood while I say that. But. Okay. Yeah. But you just literally don't think about it at all. No, I wake up. Honestly, most of the times I'm like, I should have wore one. Like, Aren't you scared to get like STD or yes, something? Yes, I get checked regularly, but I'm I, good. I've known, I've known kids, though, have gotten their, I mean, their goal is to get in the UFC or whatever. And they've gotten their girlfriend pregnant at an early age and still were able to get in the UFC. Yeah, it's not it's like a, a bad it. thing to have kids. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot. T- it's going to be a lot tougher. It just adds another layer to it. Yeah. But sometimes that layer pushes that person more and makes you a better person and makes you want to provide and makes you step up and grow up. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I don't think, I think you need to be taking consideration how the girl feels and not just you want to be a lazy bum. Because then yeah. you really sound like a piece yeah. of shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, here we go. Some uh, Patreon questions here. What is the best food to eat on the same day weigh-ins? Same day weigh-ins. I weigh in about two hours before I fight, and I always feel like crap halfway through the fight. I mean, two hours before the fight, you probably shouldn't be cutting any more than any more than four or five pounds max. Even better if you don't have to even cut. But then if you do need to eat something, I would say eat something your body's used to digesting. 
whether it's some oat, oatmeal, whether it's uh, maybe a cliff bar, or maybe a banana, something, some applesauce, something that's just easy, di- easy on your digestion. Yeah, like those little kids squeeze packs of something because it's easy to digest. Yeah, some some of those baby food packets. Um, I've I've been in plenty of fights where I, I've had bad weight cuts and I've just stuffed my fucking guts full of just shit just because I could. I didn't really know, and then I fatigue so bad in the fight, and then all the blood in my body is going to my stomach trying to digest this food and not to my muscles and not to my brain where I'm thinking about the fight and literally my whole focus in the fight is just not puking. It's just ter- a terrible thing. So yeah, something your body's used to eating here. Uh, Nick Bonsella, what are your thoughts on the Ohio train derailment? Definitely highlights the need for good, clean water. I live in Pittsburgh about an hour from where the incident occurred and have been drinking bottled wa- spring water exclusively out of precaution. Looking into Mount, Mountain Valley spring water for your boy. Thanks, Joven. I mean, that's that's crazy. You guys see that shit? Yeah, that's bad. Drinking bad water in the States. Well, it's, well like that spill is really scary because it's getting into the water. And then like people are also giving that water to their dogs or yeah. like their livestock and their animals or showering in it or bathing in it. And like your skin absorbs everything that's put on it. So it's really scary. And if it gets in like those rivers, like I showed you yesterday on that video, those rivers go all the way down to like Mississippi and like everywhere. So it's super scary. And and the scary thing about that is is like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm drinking the water. I'm fine. It's like, well, diseases don't start overnight. That could be you you drink that water and you're going to pay for it five years from now. And then you, you all of a sudden come up with a disease or something and you're like, what the fuck did this come from? Well, and then that it was like a conspiracy thing theory i guess but it was saying that in for the world economic form or whatever in 2030 if the land that you live on is like not good for you to live on then they can make you move to a smart city because they're trying to put all these smart Mm. cities up so like they're saying that they did that spill on purpose to contaminate the land to make people move off of it and you have to live in these smart cities now where are the smart cities at they're putting them out everywhere I think it's Bill Gates. Dang. They're supposed to put one like out in Tonopah. That's why they're putting that new highway and stuff. But I don't know. Kind of creepy. Fucking creepy. God damn it. Fuck. Uh, okay. What's your and JX strength and weaknesses in jujitsu? Strength and weaknesses. Mm. I feel like I'm. <clears throat> I've always been comfortable with my guard, but my weakness probably my wrestling. I'll for it, but I feel like it's it's improved a lot. Oh, but for that sure. would for sure be my weakness, probably just my wrestling. Because yeah. it's it's different when you go with a really good wrestler, like they've been doing it since high school and college, and they just fucking take you down at will mm-hmm. almost. Mm-hmm. It's like fuck. Um, I don't know. I would say, I mean, everywhere. I mean, I got to improve my guard. I got to improve my top game. Yeah, I got to improve my wrestling. But there's areas that you're like really good at, like you're really good in that top half guard position. You really like, yeah, um, front headlocks. Yeah, and you're shit. guillotined and shit. Yeah, I don't know. Probably everywhere. It's just in jujitsu. It's like it's literally never ending. I've been doing it for a long ass time, and still there's just so many spots I can improve in. But there's just like no secret in jujitsu. In jujitsu, it's like just time on the mat time on the mat you can learn to move okay great you learn to move but now you got to learn the timing of the the right timing of the move and, and and the balance of the move and just getting lots of repetitions just time on the mat is going to improve your jujitsu how you been doing sono you've been because you've been doing two week two times a week yeah. and i do slowly see you progressing yeah but i could see you progress faster with three times a week i think yeah i still get the thing that pisses me off is when my guard gets passed like when they do that thing where they dig their elbows into my knee and then they take the side control. I don't know how to get out of that, and that's just me not going well, enough. Probably you do know how to get out. I know how to get out of it, but I feel demoralized, and I let myself mentally go, "Oh, fuck, I'm this gonna lose." Yeah, you. yeah, that's what I do a lot. Yeah. yeah, you can kind of feel it when someone does that. They get discouraged because they're trying so hard to like keep them in the guard, and then the guard gets past, and they just lay there like, oh, "Yeah, fuck. I'm defeated." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "This is gonna be work to get out of." <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's next for Bo Nickel? If he wins his next matchup, I think he's fighting a guy named Jamie Pickett who could be a good match, but I don't think it'll be much of a tough match for him. I think uh, Bo Nickel is such a beast. 
I don't know. It's curious. I, I don't think the UFC is going to bring him along quick, but if he fucks up the next two guys with ease, then they're going to have to give him a tougher match, especially at middleweight. Middleweight isn't as deep as it is at 135, as, as the weight class at 155. 155, you look at the top 15 guys, and you're like, holy, they are all motherfuckers. 185 isn't that deep. So I could see him moving him up pretty quick. And he's already talking like he's going to take out the big dogs. He's such a fucking freak athlete, yeah. though, dude. Yeah, That's he, true. It's possible. It's possible. Because you would think, okay, he's a brand, brand new guy in the UFC. There's not many brand new guys in the UFC. You'd be like, oh, he could be competitive for the for the title. Yeah. Put Bo Nickel versus Alex Pereira. Who knows? I don't know. I think he gets sparked in that. Alex <laughs> Pereira is so scary. <laughs> yeah. But he's going to take Pereira down. Good luck getting there. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'd be interested. Be sweet. I'd watch. Evan Ivey, what precautions do you take for preventing CTE? And I wonder if a short fight career would still have severe negative effects on brain health. I don't know. I think it's just different, different genes. I think people, some people, brains are more durable than others. I've had a lot of fucking concussions in my life from football, boxing, MMA f for a long time. And I really thought my brain was fucked up. I, I had a I had a concussion, and I don't know because I had a concussion. I had a headache, but I also thought it was like earwax in my ear. So I took those things not called Debrox, and I just blasted mm. my ear with it, trying to get whatever it was out. And then it fucked up something in my brain to where I couldn't even see light. I couldn't even see sound for two days. And if I heard anything or saw any light, my headache would just like explode. Oh, so God. I just have to sit in a room dark. Um, so I was like, God damn, my, maybe my brain's fucked up. But I went here in Phoenix. They did, they have a brain health place, and they put me through all these tests, and they said my brain's healthier than average. So, yeah, I think that could be different for everyone, for sure. Well, I think, like, even if you're not a professional athlete, you still can get concussions by hitting your head. Mm -hmm. But doing all the protocols to help stay, like, healthy, if you are going to be a fighter, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah. For sure. And and maybe check out Dan Gardner, Dan Gardner's thing that he came out with about the concussion protocol. That'll probably help out a lot. Sam BFC, what's your favorite old fight to go back and watch? I love to go back and watch Nick Diaz, Paul Daly, and Strike Force, one round, absolute chaos. I mean, that was that's gotta be up there with one of my favorite fights too. Any fight usually Paul Daly's in is fucking so sweet. Usually Nick Diaz too. That was probably up there with some of my favorite fights too. Um, I had I have too many to too many to say what's my absolute favorite. You know what we did yesterday with Sean is we watched his first fight ever with him and it was weird because he was like he the positions he was in it was like some was against Peter Yan too like I watched that fight this morning I'm like God damn the progression of it you know what I mean like right. from his first fight wearing those little pink tap out shorts <laughs> yeah no tattoos yeah <laughs> yep yep yep. Uh, Javier Gomez, as someone who owns his own restaurant and works six days a week, 11 to 12 hour days, how do I keep myself in shape without tiring out? I do powerlifting and some bodybuilding exercise, but I've been thinking about slowing it down and moving to jiu-jitsu thoughts. Javier, I would, if I was you and I own my business, I would, I would take a pay cut, take a big pay cut and, and, and pay someone else and pay someone else to train them and teach them and make it worth it for them to help you and then maybe you can cut that in half yeah your pay gets cut in half but who cares then you have time to do what you want and then you have time to maybe do some jujitsu and then maybe eventually you don't have to really go in and work at all and your business is making you money and then you can do jujitsu and your whole day can be about just making yourself feel good and working out and shit uh zachary postal thoughts on game bread boxing Jeremy Stevens versus Jose Aldo, fucking sweet fight, sweet fight. Jose Aldo in the past dropped Jeremy with a liver shot, nice liver shot. Um, it's crazy because I think Jose Aldo's fighting Jeremy Stevens, and I think he's fighting Floyd Mayweather after. That's what um, rumor has it. Jacare, Jacare versus Vitor. I think Vitor might win. It's hard to say. Are they testing for steroids? Is Vitor going to be TRT Vitor? Because that motherfucker's scary as fuck. Jacare, a jiu-jitsu guy, still pretty good on his feet. Then we got Pettis versus Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones Jr., old, Pettis, young, athletic. Like I said, uh, probably a lot comes into play. Are they testing for PEDs or not? 
Suit regs, one credit in the jukebox. What song you putting on? <laughs> what song am I putting on? Yeah. I'm probably going to go. I'm listening to a lot of Russ right now, so I'm missing you crazy. Really? I love Russ right now. What about you, Mara? I don't know. G unit? So I smell pussy or something? <laughs> yeah. 50 <laughs> cent, mini man. <laughs> 50 cent, mini man. Uh, I don't know. It depends my fucking mood. Am I, am I in a mood where I want to beat someone's ass? Or am I in a mood where I want to just, I want to fuck or something? No suicide or, boys for you? No su <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know. It probably depends my mood. Alex Garland, best and worst parts of owning a gym. Um, Remember that thing that happened at the other gym? With the fire? Oh, the, oh, the flood. That was a, I, you had some good stoicism there, champ. I watched that. I was like, God damn, I would fold under that pressure. What, and what do you mean you'd fold? You'd fall down in a ball and cry? I would just be like, what the fuck do I do? You, were, It's guzzling out water and you're just like, it's okay. Just melting yeah. the whole place. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he stays calm, like under pressure. Yeah, that it's was impressive. Respect. Best and worst parts? I don't know. Probably, I wouldn't say the worst parts. Is not I'm not really able to train, they, and people have said this before. It's like it's hard to become a world champion in something and run a gym, and I I kind of agree because when I teach, I mean, yeah, my brain's doing it, but I, I'm not in there doing the drills. I'm not in there doing everything, so it makes it a little bit harder to compete when you're trying to build your athletes too. Um, but I just can't think. There's no worse parts of it. I'm. It's literally the my dream job. If someone asked me, you can have any job in the world, any job, what would you pick? I'd pick this. Because even without money, I'd still want to come in here with all my friends, teach them how to fight, um, roll around with the buddies. It's just like every time we come in here, even for classes, it's just like we're all hanging out, fucking around, having a good time. So it's just like I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I wouldn't say there's any worse part. I'd say the worst part is figuring out taxes. Yes, and mm. thankful for you. <laughs> <laughs> thankful for you because if it wasn't if the, if it wasn't for you i would be going to jail here in a couple yeah. of years for sure um okay roger i i feel like you and your bro should do a pod together both of you have a lot of understanding experiences that are valuable and my brother's a fucking badass he's way more badass than i i am like he the fucker's got it dialed in mentally he's got it dialed in he takes care of his health better than probably anyone i know He's just a badass dude, and he's a good dude to be around. He's just super kind, too, knowledgeable, mm. nice. Like He's awesome. Yeah. Mixed martial alien. Let's say you're healthy enough at the moment. What's the fastest you could run one mile? I'm smoking you in a one mile. Right now? Yeah. No, I'm you're not, Sono. You. I yes. see how tired you get. Let's go to the not, track. That's not one mile, though. I can do one mile in my head. I could easily. What's your fastest mile that you guys Would have you ever done? Would you put a brow on the mile? I know I can do a mile and a half in 10 minutes flat. I don't okay. care about the mile and a half. A mile <laughs> for a brow. Me versus you. Yes. And you'll take a brow too. Yep. Let me let me see you run for a little <laughs> bit and then I'll make that bet. You <laughs> yeah. Know? You were really confident there at the <laughs> I beginning. Was. The brows always make me question it a yeah. little bit. Because you're fucked without those caterpillars. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably seven minutes. No way. A mile? You could do a mile in seven minutes. Probably. Yeah. I'm doing 6.45 then. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. I'm doing 6.45. Like you're some in shape fucking athlete. I, I see how tired you get. I get tired, but I'm also expressive when I'm tired. Are uh, you a good runner? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, decent. I wouldn't say I'm like right. Usain Bolt with it, but. Yeah. I say if we just go out there and run a mile. I know I could out sprint you. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just taking off with those long strides, bro. Me and Jay raced before. Pretty How'd it go? It was pretty even. It was just the length of the gym a couple times. Oh, yeah. I could beat you to the other side of that wall from the, the <laughs> I cage. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Declan Flynn. What's up, Timbo? I'm 21 years old, and I'm solo traveling to Thailand in a few weeks to train MMA for a few months. Any advice apart from avoid the lady boys? I don't think you need to avoid them. <laughs> that's the fucking issue bud Declan um, any advice I would just go in there just be humble be nice introduce yourself to people and work hard that's the best thing you can do at going to a new gym go in there introduce yourself be nice listen to the coaches and work hard and show up and you're gonna fit in 
pretty much any gym you go to. You go if you go in there and start acting like you're the man, start start making excuses and start just being a fucking douchebag. Yeah, that's not the way to go at a new place. Bruno Graf, how do you teach 20 plus people when there are some complete beginners and some experienced people who are already got some fights under their belt? It's hard for me to focus so many different on so many different skill levels. For MMA, we we, we had to switch it. At, at first we did a Jakar and Courtney were teaching the MMA program for everyone. And then there'd be a day one person who doesn't even know how to get in a stance. And, and some of the guys that have been training with them for a while. So now we have an advanced MMA and then we have a beginner's MMA. So I think that's important to have. Jiu-jitsu wise, I try to tell the people Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays are going to be for the more, more advanced practices. You're welcome to come. But if you don't understand the moves, then I don't have time to break down each move because you don't even know how to really shrimp yet. So I encourage everyone to go to the beginner's classes. But it is, it, it is tough, especially when you have 40 people in a room. And, and 20 people are doing the move right. 20 people are doing the move completely wrong. You don't have time to sit there with each individual person and break it down. You got to focus on the guys that are more advanced at that point. But that's why at our gym we have so many different beginners classes. And if they're going with someone that has been going for a while, people here are good at helping yeah. them. Yeah, for sure. Tim, I uh, wanted to bring up, too, I don't know if you saw, did you see about that Buffalo Bills player and the COVID vaccine? You know, the one that collapsed on the field like uh, a while ago? Yeah. And everyone made a big deal? Uh, there's that thing where he had an interview with Michael Strahan, and he, they were like, what did the doctors say, like, post you getting, and he's like, I'd like to stay away from that. And a lot of people are tying it into the, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but the myocarditis is caused by the vaccine. It's like a heart, a serious heart effect yeah and it happens to mostly young guys and it happens on the he just got his booster before that mm -hmm. and that's when it happens is when people get the booster so he like it's like what if there's a covid link and the nfl saying no we forced this on you don't you bring that up oh my god right yeah you we're know? gonna not pay you your millions yeah. of dollars that when i saw that i was like i am glad i did not get that vaccine all right it's so scary because they were saying that myocarditis like it's mostly happening in young healthy males yeah. that didn't have any issues at all it's super scary. It's like what are the, and, and what do the people say that that were so about that vaccine? I know, and they fucking just they 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 almost look at you like you're stupid for not getting the vaccine. Or do it's do some of them say no? I fucked up. That vaccine you shouldn't have got. Or they're like no, and eh, they're just fucking retarded about it. Well, now they're saying too. We we said this was for the first variation of COVID. These boosters are because it keeps evolving. It's like no. Why did you have the first one if it it didn't stop transmission. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't do anything. It did, yeah. Same with my same thing happened to Matt, my brother. He got literally a blood clot. A blood clot in his leg, mm. like after the vaccine. I'm like, like he almost lost his leg. Yeah, he's completely healthy. He never had issues with it in the past. No, and that was one of the, like the side effects was blood clots. That's yeah. why there's some people that are just like so trusting of the government. Or it has to do with like political parties too, like because it was like a lot of Democrats want like push towards that so they're still agreeing with their side mm -hmm. so they're not going to say that it was wrong mm -hmm. yeah so they're not going to say it's wrong it's like dude come on you're not going to say it was wrong or some people believe in like like if you look at the charts from when like our parents were kids or even when we were kids how many vaccines we get to what they get now it's crazy we get way more now it's insane mm -hmm. even babies and stuff the babies yeah and they give like so many more at a time. And then sometimes they're saying like that's linked to like autoimmune diseases or autism. I'm and a little bit nervous too with that kind of stuff. Cause in the military, the first day of boot yeah. camp, they put you in line and they say, pull up those sleeves. Yeah. You have to get everything for the military. Just one after another. I'm like, Jesus, I woke up feeling sick the next day, probably filled with, you know what? You're like, yeah. And who knows what kind of sauce it is. They're injecting you. And maybe one day they'll figure out one be like, no, this, this stops people from having an open mind. It could be. You don't yeah. fucking know. You stick them with it, and they and then they just turn into robots that they just listen to whatever is told. <laughs> listen. Don't think. That's so scary. Don't think. Could well, and be. there's different, like, brands of, like, the same kind of vaccines, you know? There's different pharmaceutical companies, and they all use, like, different kind of like, carriers, what's in there. Mm. And so sometimes you'll have a reaction to, like, a certain brand, because I know with, like, my horses – at certain brands, they'll be like, don't use this one because there's a lot of horses that have reactions or like 
my one horse had a reaction last year, had a big bump on his neck. So I was like, I'm not going to vaccinate him anymore. It gets scary. You just don't know what you're putting in there. Yeah, it's fucking scary. Christ. Uh, Liz Thomas, do you guys use the aura ring? And, it, and if so, is it worth it? I've had two aura rings in the past and I fucking lost them both. <laughs> and, but I do, re I do remember, I mean, I just try to do the same thing every night. I try to do the same thing. I do remember when I would get my deep sleep, what I did the night before and what I did the previous day. So I just try to replicate that. Sometimes those aura rings, sometimes I feel like, yeah, you can trust them, but then sometimes it's like. Well, like Paul Chuck was saying too, like use it as a scale, just like you said, and be able to use it to listen to your body. Cause it's probably not always going to be accurate, but use it so be like okay i did this this and this and i slept really good or i did this this and this and i slept terrible so you can learn to start listening to your own body instead of relying on that technology technology that's made one way and it's like everyone's so different yes um jesse shemansky best book recommendation for a teenager amateur ah oh, i would try i would check out maybe mind gym mind gym or the Champion's Mind book. Check out those. I think you'll like them. Uh, Booches G. Do you think Schmidt is going to stay consistent with training jiu-jitsu? Brother needs it. He'll be a blue belt and not afraid of a little bush before we know it. Uh, I would love to say he's going to stay consistent, but I don't think so. I would love to. I would love to just say, yeah, 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 yeah. But ah, jiu-jitsu's tough. Oh, yeah. Every time, especially for a beginner, jiu-jitsu's fucking tough. You get more tired than you've ever gotten before. You have all these people beating you up. Your body's sore. It's a tough thing. But, I mean, if people who stick with it, they usually do level up. And not only level up, like, physically and athletically. In life, it seems like they level up. And yeah. learn how to stay calm when shit gets hectic. And just a ton of things transfer over, I think. It would help him more than going to the gym if he wants to lose weight, too. In yes. my personal opinion. like yeah. That's a workout, workout. Well, over what i seen. Yeah. yeah. It's a full body workout. And I've had people tell me like, if I would know my body would change like this, I would have started jujitsu before. Like it really gets you in shape. Like that's the strongest my abs were ever when I was training super hard. Mm -hmm. I'm losing the dad gut slowly. You are. Yeah. Slowly. It's good. Uh, Chase Davis, would you ever, would you ever say being smaller with good technique is, is an advantage in jujitsu? I feel like holding down short stocky guys with good technique is sometimes harder than taller guys. Check out Cooking with Volk's Steak episode he learns from the High Level Chef. I saw that, and it's good. I like Volk's cooking shows. Volk's just a fucking good dude, isn't he? Yeah, and I got a lot badass. of respect after that fight. <sighs> Even before that fight. Well, yeah. But goddamn. Uh, would you say smaller with good technique it was an advantage? I, no. I mean, if you have good technique, it's going to be an advantage no matter what size you are. Chase? RBD, where do you see pro pro nogi jujitsu in the next five years in terms of popularity? Do you see yourself being a contender in the next ADCC? I hope so. I fucking hope so. But goddamn, do I get bummed out when I get injured constantly? I can't train how like I want to train. I don't know what the fuck it is. I try to do everything right with when I'm when I'm eating. I try to do it with recovery, but I just seem to get fucking injured. I don't know if it's genes. Could be genes because, I mean, I don't think bicep tendon tears are very common and you and your brother both tore your biceps. Yeah. So I really want to. I really want to. I have the coaches. I mean, have the teammates to do it. So if I can stay healthy enough, yes. In five years, I think jujitsu is going to be double as popular as it is now. I think it's going to be in, they're going to put it in high schools and I think they're going to put it in colleges and I think that's going to change it. I wish they would do that. Once a they put in school team sport, once they put it in the Olympics, they probably will. Once they put jujitsu and grappling in the Olympics, they'll probably start having it in high schools and colleges. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't. I think that'd be huge, especially just for confidence, like especially those ages and learning confidence or learning how to stay calm. Like that's going to carry on. Like think about when you learn it as an adult. If you learn it as a kid, it's going to be like ingrained in your brain. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be good. Harry Galvin, advice on how to throw the perfect teep. There's different ways to throw teep kicks. There's a karate type teep kick, and there's a there's a Muay Thai type keep teep kick. Muay Thai keep teep kick. It's a little bit more loaded up, and it's a little bit more just push to get the guy off you. I remember a, a guy named John Tuck from Guam. He was in the UFC for a long time. He came to the lab, and he was stabbing people with his teep. He no load up. His hands would stay the same. Pull his toes back, 
and just snap, like stab you with it. And we started doing that. I started stabbing people with it. Now Suge started stabbing people with it. And it's, it's just a fast, quicker, teep kick. It's kind of a little bit hard to explain unless I do a video. But yeah, I think, it, I think it's a mixture between the Muay Thai and the karate kick. John Hannon, Jobins, if you can ha can't handle the coldest setting on your shower, you don't need a cold plunge. Don't waste, don't wait wishing you had a cold plunge. Start taking cold showers. I think that's true. Eric Timbo would love to see you guys do a pod with Paul Tech and Dan Garner in the same room. That would be sweet. I would really enjoy that, Eric. That's a good idea. Chris Polanco, thoughts on the on the train der derailments and the balloon shot of the sky. The balloon shot of the sky is a little creepy, isn't it? Mm, yeah. And then I fall. I mean, I follow some things on Twitter. I don't know if I should, but it's just like it seems like we're getting close based on what I'm reading, which I don't fucking know what's true and what's not. But it seems like you're getting closer to a war is fucking scary well and then i was listening to joe rogan's podcast yesterday and they were saying that biden did something with ukraine which made putin pull out of like the nuclear agreement which is like really scary i know we've been giving them uh like different weapon uh, vehicles and stuff like giving them a lot of shit to help fight back and then the russians don't like that but remember war makes money for america yeah that gives it's them an incentive. industry yeah that's why i'm like I have to have Tim snap my leg so I don't get called back to to war. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> foot lock you. <laughs> it's broken. Can't go. Yeah, oh, that's, that's so scary. Well, and it's like, yeah, it's industry for us, and it's not here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Jesse Swain, Yo Timbo, I'm fighting a high level wrestler, and I'm fighting a high level wrestler, and I'm a long and rangy bantamweight. What are some specifics I should be working on in the next seven weeks? It depends where your level's at, Jesse Swain. It depends where your level's at. But Wizard, Framing, um, having a good front headlock, learning to stand up against the cage, those things. Those things. Uh, the, the right reaction, when he initiates a shot, you having the right reaction right off the rip. Instead of, he shoots, okay, he's deep in a shot, now I gotta think of the reaction, now you're already too late. He's gonna take you down. Um, getting up against the fence is a whole nother thing. Getting up in the open is a whole nother thing. But those are things throughout your career that you need to get, become an expert at anyway. So it'll, uh, getting prepared for a good wrestler will always help you level up, win or lose. Nathan Hawthorne, hey brother, what's your favorite way to set up a double leg from the open in the cage using punches, feints, and kicks? There's a handful of ways. I'll do, I'll do some videos for Patreon, but a lot of it depends. It depends. Is the guy moving backwards? Is the guy coming forward hard? Um, is the guy just standing there? There's, there's just so many different ways. A favorite way to set up a double leg? Yeah, it's too many different ones. Luke Johnson, what's happening, Jovens? Do you guys want to, guys want a rug sorted for the pod? Yeah, I'd have a rug. You know what I can't wait for, Tim? What? Me versus Warlike. Boxing? Mm -hmm. I, I really am. He thinks he's going to outpace me. We're going three threes? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give that. I'll do that. Remember, but but when we said three threes at first, you you were a little bit. But war won't iffy. accept it. It won't. Or, he I'm did. willing to go. He already did. Then he, that's his own demise. Okay. Are yep. you gonna start going to kickboxing classes or? If I have this fight signed up, I'll be there religiously. Why War's you, getting put down. Well, why don't you just start now? You uh, see, she's putting me on. War's <laughs> fucked. War's yeah, fucked. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, Andrew Elgin with Volcano. What does maintenance schedule look like? What do you do with the leftovers? How many bags per bowl? You can do three bags per bowl usually. I mean, yeah, three bags per bowl. You got to cook that third bowl a little hotter than you cook the first one. Um, maintenance isn't really hard. I always just brush it out, brush it out, clean it up, easy maintenance. But there's like a little filter in there because it was really scratching my throat. And Danny showed me how to clean that and replace that. And when we replaced that, it stopped. So you got to replace that. Once in a while, yeah. Landon, what are some solid combos that work well for wrestlers after faking or taking a shot in MMA? I mean, anything. You have a, a good advantage. If you're a good wrestler, you have a, an advantage against strikers. If you're a good wrestler with decent striking, sometimes you can outstrike a good striker because that striker is constantly th worried about the takedown. And if you're good at selling that takedown and punching off of it, it can open up a lot. Ah, uh, simple combos though. Three twos, changing levels. Three twos, double jab, changing levels, uppercuts. Um, there's a handful of those too. Ian Schuler, you or JX ever get bullied in school? I did. I got bullied a lot. I went to a Native American elementary school and I got beat up a handful of times. 
They called me ketchup. They didn't even Dude, know Dude, I can't name. imagine that. You imagine it. I can't, like... And I, I got into a couple of fights with some Native Americans kids, and I was always tough, but they were usually whooping my ass. But you're Native American, too. Yeah, I tried to tell them that, and they said, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I am. I didn't believe you either, so. Uh, <laughs> Riley Mayer, you, uh, JX, you ever got bullied? Mm, not really. I don't think so, no. Not that I can remember. I got mm. jumped. That's like a, scary. At a house party. That's as close as bullying as I got. Did they steal your stuff? <clears throat> no. It was just like a house party and like they were trying to fight my friend. So I jumped in and there was like 10 of them and two of us and they jumped and then it's someone shot a gun in the air and then everybody just spread. Oh my God. There we go. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Being a carrot top, being a carrot top at all Native American school. That's my name. Carrot and ketchup. Just call me that. You guys ever use the so right along with the foam rolling that adds to recovery? Yeah, we have the so right, Riley. I, I do it once in a while. James Sooth, when you feel like you and your partner are having a rough couple days in a row, small arguments, dumb little shit, how do you try and reset and get back on track? Usually it's like you take a breather, you cool down, and then if if you can be big enough to own up where you think you're wrong, sometimes maybe you're not wrong. But you're just like, this is such a stupid fight that we're fighting about. Maybe just say you're wrong. Just say you're wrong to move on maybe sometimes. Maybe try to be the first to apologize and sit there and talk it out. Because those little things, it, maybe it's not about those little things. It's something bigger that you guys need to talk about. And you're making it about those little things. Yeah. Could be it too. How do you reset? Or give her a good fucking a little bit of love making goes a long way it really does it really does but you still got to talk about it <laughs> mm -hmm. pillow talk lucas siebert okay last one here fought saturday motherfucker hit hard i got hit i got hit a couple times i completely resorted to my wrestling took some desperation shots i'm not proud of one by sub dominated with my wrestling but what but do you think it would be beneficial for me to take kickboxing fi fight or something where i can just rely i can't just rely on my wrestling to get used to the fire or just stick to the AMI MMA fights. I'm 3-0 AMI, not turning pro until at least March 2024. Lucas, I think there's no rush, but I think you're right on track. I think getting in a kickboxing match or a boxing match where you can get comfortable because you're going to run into someone that's a better wrestler than you. And if, if, if your whole plan in a fight is to take someone down and you shoot two, three times in the first round and you can't take them down, then you're not going to panic and be like, fuck, there's, I'm probably going to lose. I can't, he's shutting down my wrestling. So being able to get comfortable on your feet, get some, just a few good setups on your feet where you're comfortable cracking someone, get some good defense. Um, I think uh, taking a kickboxing match or a little boxing match wouldn't hurt at all, Lucas. So good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it was a good pod. Thank you, Sono. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you, JX. Thank you for having me on. Yep. Let's uh, have a good weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 78. Check out the newsletter. I think you'll enjoy it. Check out the newsletter and then uh, patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. Years of content up there. Never seen before on YouTube. I've had that Patreon for years now, so you can go back and check out a bunch of shit. So have a good weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Love y'all. Bye-bye.